Hello, welcome back. We continue with our explanation, uh, exploration of uh, natural deduction via the Fitch style proof system. I'm going to do more problems from uh, this packet uh, for my own students. Um, we on Friday uh, learned the next uh, big uh, kind of method in, in, in natural deduction, which is proof by contradiction. So what I'm going to do right now in this video, proof 11 through 17. And these problems start to get pretty hard. Uh, okay, let's go. Proof number 11. Um, what is proof number 11? Well, it says, uh, prove not not A from A. Uh, okay, so this says uh, this. Uh, okay, maybe that's kind of silly or something. Um, but if you know something, then you know that it's not the case that it's not the case that that thing. Uh, okay, we do it. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> I guess the, the thing to do here, um, and uh, uh, perhaps if we were doing, uh, I mentioned this in class, but perhaps if we were doing a very uh, formal, um, maybe from the perspective of computer science, uh, approach to uh, propositional logic, I would be sort of very uptight about uh, the precise syntax, but notice here I just do the normal human thing, which is to say not, not, because really that can't possibly be misinterpreted. But uh, in some places you might find uh, people actually inserting a, a parenthes uh, parentheses here, uh, because, um, well, uh, if this was built up kind of recursively, um, but okay, no one ever does that, I'm not going to do that either, but maybe for just this moment we should recognize that you know, this, when we write not, not A, that really is kind of the negation of something, uh, and it's the negation of not A. In other words, um, this uh, conclusion that we're looking for here is, in fact, a negation. And when I say uh, a proposition is a negation, I mean that the main connective of that sentence is a negation, which is to say, this proposition is of the form, you know, not X. Okay, where in this case, X happens to be, you know, not A. Uh, all right, uh, to, to start the proof, I mean, there's this premise, A, and then I have this goal in mind. The goal is to show that it's not the case that, not A. And basically, the way that you uh, show that something is not true is by doing a proof by contradiction. Uh, now, um, well, I'll just keep it like that. We're doing classical logic, so I'll just kind of be loose and call everything a proof by contradiction, but really it's like a negation. It's how you prove a negation, to be more precise. The way you prove a negation uh, is to show that uh, the thing that you're negating, you know, can't be, can't be the case. So, alright, this is an extremely long-winded way of saying, dude, you do the obvious thing, which is you assume not A. And uh, then you uh, uh, conclude uh, kind of immediately that, uh, that this is impossible for lines 1 and lines 2 um, to, be, uh, to be both true. And we can now say A and not A. This is an intro one, two. Uh, and uh, then we have a rule which says that anytime you have a proposition of the form X and not X, that that is a contradiction. So uh, not every Fitch style proof system employs this particular um, uh, symbol, uh, this, this particular rule, but it's very useful to have this rule. It's called bottom intro. And uh, bottom uh, is a uh, symbol. Uh, it's, a, it's a, technically speaking, it's, it, it means always false. So it's, a, um, it's kind of a connective, technically speaking, uh, but it's a connective uh, which uh, connects sort of zero propositions uh, to, to, together, okay? And so the, the truth table for bottom is, uh, well, it's like this, it's just false. So it's always false. But it is itself a proposition, so it's a sort of a, a formal part of the actual language, of the object language. Uh, it, it's it's a, just a, a, an entire uh, proposition which consists of just one uh, symbol, uh, but uh, and it's just false, always. Well, uh, I uh, have this rule that says I can introduce a bottom uh, from uh, uh, from uh, a previous line in which I have a proposition of the form x and not x. So this is of that form, so I say bottom. Okay, and uh, once I introduce this, this, uh, this symbol bottom into my propositional logic, and once I introduce this, this uh, bottom uh, introduction into my um, 
pitch dial proof system, now I can uh, sort of um, define, which I did in, in class, but for here I'm just kind of doing them as they come up for the purposes of this video. Uh, I can define a, a, a rule, uh, and uh, the rule is meant to model uh, sort of proof by contradiction. And the idea is if you want to show that something is false, you assume it's true and then you, you reach a contradiction. Here, this contradiction is going to take the form of bottom. So bottom is, is sort of uh, um, uh, lumps together kind of every possible contradiction as like a single contradiction. Okay, anyway, here it is. Uh, intuitively speaking, I think this makes total sense that I uh, supposed something in line two, it's led to falsehood, uh, and uh, therefore my conclusion is that this thing I assumed in line two is false. Um, but really, the rule says that uh, what you can do is uh, if, you, if, if you assume something and, and it leads uh, to bottom, then, then you can conclude that the opposite of that thing, or the negation of that thing. And that rule is called a um, negation intro. So we have negation intro, and you just cite the line numbers of the proof. Okay, uh, this is maybe, uh, that was kind of maybe too easy or something to, to be uh, helpful. Uh, so, so now uh, let's try proof 12, although proof 12 is, is uh, kind of maybe also sort of controversial. Um, uh, what's going on in, in proof 12? Well, proof 12 asks you to do the following. P, uh, not P, conclusion Q. Okay, this is kind of crazy and, and maybe deserves some more attention. Uh, so this is an argument, and, and, and we should you know talk for a minute about this argument and and what kind of features uh, it has. Uh, all right, well there are two premises, p and not p, and then there's, there's this conclusion q. All right, so this uh, uh, argument is a little bit bewildering uh, because uh, first of all, uh, p and not p can't both be true. If p is true, then this premise is true and this premise is false. If p is false, then this premise is true and this one's false. Therefore, I have this argument in which. Uh, it's simply impossible for both my premises to be true. Uh, and so this is kind of maybe a, a stupid argument or, or, or maybe a useless argument. Uh, if you think of arguments as um, taking you uh, from true premises to true conclusions, that's what valid arguments are. Uh, valid arguments take you from true premises to true conclusions. You can follow a valid argument, you can use a valid argument, uh, and as long as you, you feed a valid argument true premises, then you will get back true conclusions. This is the best way to think about validity. But uh, if we define validity uh, to mean uh, whenever the or, or the definition of what it means for an argument to be valid is an argument is valid when whenever the premises are true, the conclusion is true. And so here we have some sort of odd uh, edge, edge case or something like that because uh, it's just not possible for these premises to both be true. Um, and so what we get is this example of sort of vacuous validity. Um, this, this argument is vacuously valid. Uh, and it's valid in the sense that whenever the premises are true, the conclusion is true. Well, the premises can't all be true. So these premises are never true. Uh, if you think of a valid argument as a, uh, as, as a um, uh, um, uh, some kind of um, life <laughs> lesson, not life lesson, um, uh, guidance or, 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 or a way, of, way of life or some kind of directions for how to conduct yourself, uh, valid arguments are arguments that you can trust, uh, then you can trust this argument uh, because uh, it will never lead you astray. Uh, though, uh, uh, and the reason why it can never lead you astray is because you can never execute this argument uh, appropriately. Uh, because uh, you will never be in a, in a position where you have true premises, and, and so uh, this argument uh, becomes um, uh, usable. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, there's more that can possibly be said about this, uh, but this is a sort of a famous uh, feature of propositional logic. Uh, and uh, what, what, what you might find kind of bewildering about this is that I seem to conclude, to call this argument valid uh, seems a little bit offensive or something because um, here we are uh, concluding something Q that seems to have nothing to do with the premises whatsoever. And so again, we are, we're breaking uh, this kind of uh, feeling uh, that the conclusion of an argument should be relevant in some way to the premises. And here, sort of very explicitly so, this Q is totally irrelevant uh, to these premises. Um, and uh, yet, hopefully I've argued that by the definition of validity that we have adopted, this is the classical definition of validity, uh, that this argument is valid. Whenever the premises are true, <coughs> never, 
uh, the conclusion is true. And uh, you might say that this is actually a flaw of propositional logic, uh, one could argue. Uh, that uh, the notion of validity uh, is itself interpreted according to the material conditional. Okay, um, so you might have some more sophisticated logic that you think better captures, you know, sort of philosophical reasoning or something like that, human reasoning, mathematical reasoning, uh, which, which would not uh, uh, deem this argument uh, valid. But in classical propositional logic, this is certainly a valid argument. Okay, um, good. Uh, and I should say that this whole thing is, is sort of famous enough to have its own name. It's called the principle of explosion. Um, and uh, the principle of explosion says that um, if you have contradictory premises, you can prove anything. Uh, and uh, this is, I think, important. Um, uh, well, maybe I just do the proof. Let's let's do the proof. Uh, so so uh, ideally, uh, you know the. You would uh, agree with me that this argument is intuitively uh, valid, uh, at least uh, once you make these kinds of um, explanations, uh, and then I would just prove it. Perhaps this proof will give you, um, the proof I'm about to, to give you will, um, will give you more confidence uh, that this argument is valid, but it's also true that we're still building our, our confidence in this, in this rule, so um, perhaps this is misplaced to do this so early. Anyway, here we are. We have these two premises, P and not P, and it basically just goes like this. Uh, if I want to prove Q, well, there's really only one way to, to, to prove something that uh, doesn't appear anywhere previously in the proof, uh, and that is to do a proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction is sort of the thing you do when you can't think of what else to do. Um, and so what I'm going to do right now, and this does appear to kind of come out of nowhere, is to suppose uh, not Q. Ah, so, okay, so suppose that Q is false or something like that. Well, if Q is false, now, via these rules that I think I uh, understand pretty well here, I have these premises P and not P, uh, I can and them together, uh, that's by uh, and intro uh, 1 and 2, but then that is just immediately a contradiction. Uh, so I say bottom intro, uh, line 4, because line 4 is of the form X and not X. But now, uh, that means that this thing that I assumed in line 3 was false, because uh, it led to a contradiction. And uh, according to the, the sort of rule for uh, negation introduction, uh, when I um, uh, assume something and it leads to a contradiction, uh, then I know that that thing I assumed is false, and so I get not not Q. Uh, that is the technical uh, rule of negation, uh, negation intro. So negation intro says, um, and, and I cite this now appropriately, that uh, you know, if, you, if you assume something and it leads to a contradiction, then, then in, you can conclude the opposite of that thing, the negation of that thing. And then finally we have a rule in classical logic which says that if it's not the case that it's not the case that Q, uh, then, uh, then Q. And, uh, um, okay, this is, in some other logics, this is kind of controversial, in fact, but in propositional logic, I mean, this, you can't possibly argue with this. This is a clearly a valid argument because every sentence is either true or false, and, uh, you know, the truth table for these uh, just yields the same thing, so these are logically equivalent propositions, so this, is cert this certainly holds. Uh, and that is negation elimination uh, is the name for that rule, uh, line six. Okay, so that completes the proof. Um, you might still be bewildered here because, uh, you know, in, in some ways, uh, this feels like you're cheating in some kind of a way uh, because there was nothing special about Q. Yeah, that's the point. There was nothing special about Q. At the moment that you assumed not Q and then reached for P and not P um, to produce a contradiction, you may have been feeling like, wow, I just kind of had like a contradiction sort of sitting in my pocket in a normal proof by contradiction, you, you assume something and then you show that that thing led to a contradiction. But this may be uh, uh, sort of, um, uh, this uh, maybe uh, explains uh, the principle of explosion. The principle of explosion says that two contradictory premises are extremely powerful because those two contradictory premises can be put together to make a contradiction 
and, and in other words, with the power of proof by contradiction, uh, you can employ them anywhere to prove anything. And that is, in fact, the principle of explosion. Uh, it's really like one sad face, because it's, it's, the, it's the fact that I have both of these that makes me uh, sad. Or happy, if your goal is to like destroy all life and prove all things. Uh, the principle of explosion says um, that, uh, well, uh, given contradictory premises, everything is just exploded in the sense that you can prove every single thing uh, that you could possibly want. This was a proof of Q, but I could just as well have proved not Q. And so, in fact, every single proposition becomes uh, true and, well, also false. And you're kind of in the absurd world. So this is a bad place to be. For example, if you were doing some math, um, it would be really bad if you had uh, some contradictory premises. Uh, because then you could use proof by contradiction to, to prove any, any fact whatsoever. All right, I'm going way too slow. Let's uh, pick it up uh, with sort of less commentary now. Uh, I'm starting to think that these maybe weren't the best uh, two proofs to begin with. Um, proof 13 uh, is um, uh, more straightforward, but also <laughs> has kind of a feature, uh, which is that there are no premises. Um, all right, and, and I sort of already um, uh, mentioned in class, this is not uh, P and Q, and not P. I use brackets and parentheses interchangeably, uh, just for clarity. So, um, so this is an argument with sort of, sort of with no premises. Okay, without going into details about why this is a good or bad thing. Uh, to consider uh, uh, this uh, as a, um, acceptable uh, to have uh, arguments with no premises. It kind of messes with my definition of argument validity a little bit. Uh, let's not worry about that. And, and uh, let's agree that uh, if we are proving something from no premises, uh, then we're proving sort of that it just is true always. Um, in fact, uh, that just is another way of saying that this is just a tautology. So the tautologies, um, the sentences which are always true, are precisely those sentences which can be proved uh, in this Fitch style proof system from no premises. Okay, uh, anyway, how do we do it? Uh, this is maybe our first pr uh, case uh, so far in this whole video where it really makes sense to kind of uh, think about what's going on and work from the outside in. And what do I mean by that? Uh, I am trying to prove something. What is this thing I'm trying to prove? Not um, uh, P and uh, Q uh, and uh, not P. And actually, I guess this proof is different from sort of every proof we've seen so far in the sense that uh, since I have no premises, I have nothing to sort of work with. And so if you're trying to go in order, you might find yourself sort of bewildered a little bit by the fact that I can't do anything now because I don't have anything. Uh, and I, I think it's a misunderstanding to think of the, the strategy for these proofs is to start with some things that you have and then uh, sort of do something with that. Uh, instead, you should really always be focused on the thing that you are trying to prove. And the thing that I'm trying to prove is this. So, um, the fact that I have no premises is really not a problem at all. Uh, I should always keep my eye on the thing I'm trying to prove. What is this thing I'm trying to prove? It's a negation. And when I say it's a negation, I mean the main connective of that sentence is a negation. And there's only really one good way to prove a negation, and that is negation introduction. Therefore, uh, sort of immediately, I have a strategy brewing here. The strategy is, okay, if I want to show something's false, I just suppose it's true. So I'm going to suppose P and Q, uh, and not P, and uh, here, if I can get a bottom out of that, uh, if that leads to a contradiction, then I'm entitled to assert uh, the negation of that. That's just negation introduction. Uh, and now it just becomes completely clear what to do. Because now uh, I went from this uh, ultimate goal to this sort of sub-goal of, of, uh, of proving this bottom. This is what's called working from the, from the outside in. Uh, this is the best way to do these proofs. Okay, now I have something to work with. I have, I have this conjunction. So I'll perform uh, conjunction elimination twice. So conjunction elim, uh, conjunction elim, uh, one, yeah. And, okay, now just one more time, I can take the P out of line 2, uh, so conjunction E and 2. Uh, and then, here I have just staring me in the face, uh, P and not P. Uh, and that is by conjunction intro, um, 3 and 4. And that is of the form X and not X, so that's a contradiction. So I just do bottom intro, 
uh, 5, and uh, indeed, exactly what I hoped would happen uh, happens. I started with something, I got a bottom, and so I conclude the opposite of that. That is negation introduction uh, lines 1 through 6. Okay. Uh, all right, I think we're pretty clear about negation introduction, how it works. Informally, we just call this kind of proof by contradiction. If you want to show something is false, you suppose it's true, and you show that that leads to absurdity. Okay, um, four more proofs to do in this video, although my family seems to be downstairs interested in me donating them, maybe. I'll ignore them and just push on. Uh, I'm going to do uh, 15 uh, before I do 14, uh, just because um, 15 is easier <laughs> than 14. Uh, I should probably have changed the order around in this packet, but uh, I don't want to because I already have an answer key. Okay, so I'm going to do 15, so, so proof 15, uh, and in my class we, we did this one, I think, in class. This is a good example of a proof that's like, Still pretty easy, but kind of long, or I don't know, a little bit involved, or something like that. Uh, here's what it says. Uh, it says, if you have premise not P or not Q, uh, conclude uh, not P and Q. Okay, and this is famously one of the De Morgan laws. Uh, if, um, uh, <laughs> if P is false or Q is false, uh, then it's not the case that they're both true. Okay, so it's just very intuitively clear if you talk it out. You can, of course, uh, show that this is an argument, uh, that this is a valid argument by um, uh, constructing a truth table. Uh, and in fact, these two are logically equivalent to each other. So not only is this argument valid, but if you swap the premise and conclusion, it's also a valid argument. Um, but we are going uh, sort of in just one direction, uh, so to speak, uh, from here to here. And okay, uh, you know, this De Morgan law is famous because it's just, uh, an argument that comes up so often, this is an example of, of sort of logical reasoning, that comes up so often, uh, but uh, I think the power of this Fitch style proof system maybe is, is coming through here, which is that uh, there's nothing sort of special, from the perspective of the Fitch style proof system, there's nothing special about this particular valid argument. Uh, it can also be proved, so there's no, uh, there's nothing mystical about uh, the De Morgan's laws that they deserve any kind of special status or anything. Uh, they're just another valid argument, and in fact every valid uh, argument in propositional logic uh, can be executed uh, using just the rules that we've outlined of course, once we once we finish introducing them all. Okay, uh, here we go. I have not P or not Q. I want not P and Q. Uh, and so the way to think about this whole thing is is backwards, right? If I want not P and Q, well that just is a negation. So I'm going to write that here, not P and Q. And immediately, my I should be down here. Not on what I have, but on what I want. Uh, and uh, what do I want? I want this. Uh, and so, uh, what's the best way to prove a negation? Well, the best way to prove a negation is proof by contradiction. So, uh, although the other way will work as well, um, uh, the, simpler, the simplest way to do this problem, I think the most straightforward way, is to just assume that P and Q is true. And now I hope for a bottom. And if I can get a bottom, then I just immediately assert this and I'm done. Okay, uh, what now? Uh, well, how am I gonna get this bottom? Well, I, now I am going to look sort of back up at, at the two sentences I have access to right now, which are lines one and lines two. And uh, okay, it's sort of obvious how to squeeze information out of line two. I could just grab either one of these um, uh, conjuncts, in fact I could do that even even now, um, but uh, line one is more interesting, it is a disjunction, there's only one way to use a disjunction, that is proof by cases. So I have to do a proof by cases, and I'm just going to do that right now. Uh, on the one hand, let me assume uh, not P. Oh, well, now I see exactly what's going on, right? Uh, because from line two, I can get P, uh, and even uh, two, and now I can just put those back together, and I have a contradiction. Um, so, yeah, and intro three, four, bottom intro five. Uh, and the point here is that I basically just looked at this left disjunct, 
examined it, supposed that it was, it was the case, and showed that it led to a contradiction. Well, now, in a completely uh, symmetric manner, I can do that with the other disjunct uh, to show that it also leads to a contradiction. So on the other hand, if it's not Q that was true uh, from line 1, well, then I, I reach for Q from line 2, and I get, uh, and uh, that becomes and elim2, uh, but that gives me a Q and not Q, that gives me a bottom. This is an intro, um, 7 and 8, and this is bottom intro uh, 9. Okay, so what's happened here is I, uh, I'm in the middle of proof by cases. I'm exploring line 1, and here's where my exploration has, has sent me. Uh, it sent me to, to bottom in both cases. Well, if both cases lead to a bottom, then I'm now entitled to just conclude bottom. And where did that bottom come from? Uh, it came from line one. This entire thing has been an exploration of line one. And so the justification for line 11 is that is or elimination. There was this disjunction in line one. I eliminated it via a proof by cases. And the proof by cases said, hey, in the th lines three through six subproof, I showed that the left disjunct led to a bottom. In the um, uh, lines 7 through 10 subproof, I showed that the right disjunct leads to a bottom, therefore bottom. But what justifies uh, this step is the disjunction in line 1. So ultimately, this entire process came from line 1, and that's the sense in which it's, it's an or elimination. I have eliminated the disjunction by sort of using it, the only way to use a disjunction. All right, uh, and here we are in line 12, we're done. We started assuming something in line 2, we arrived at the bottom, and so by negation intro um, uh, 2 through 11, uh, I, I finish this proof. Okay, uh, some interesting features uh, of this proof, uh, I mentioned this in class, I don't know if anyone understood this, and, and maybe you won't understand it now either, and I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh, you can sort of see why uh, there's, this, there's this sort of step where we take this contradiction and we, we seem to waste time or something, you know, converting this contradiction into like a, a generic contradiction, so to speak. You can think of bottom as being a generic contradiction. And we have this rule which converts a generic contradiction into a bottom for proofs exactly like this. Without bottom uh, in my system, then uh, the subproof here would end with P and not P, and the subproof here would end with Q and not Q, but that's not actually the same proposition. And so my, um, my uh, 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 sort of syntax for how the proof by cases is supposed to work, that you can only conclude something when both disjuncts lead to the same thing, uh, I would be sort of stuck in a kind of a way. But intuitively, all contradictions are, are really just the same. And uh, I guess by standardizing this, uh, uh, kind of idea, then um, uh, I avoid uh, I avoid that problem. Okay, um, whew, good. We're going to do 14, 16, and 17. That's it. Uh, but they're all hard, and uh, I guess 14 is maybe is maybe the hardest uh, proof uh, that we've done yet. It's actually quite hard. Um, so. In an average year, I would say, you know, most people, you know, don't, don't figure it out the first time or, or, or find it very difficult or get help or, or, or struggle with it. So, okay, let's, let's do this right now. Also, in a normal year, I would spend a lot of class time talking about it, but I just don't think I'm going to. So, this is, this is your lesson on number 14 this year. Okay, what do we have? We have not uh, P and R, and here we have um, a not P or not R. Okay, so... Uh, first of all, is this argument valid? Yeah, it's definitely valid, right? If it's not true that P and R uh, are true, then it means that one of them has to be false. This is another one of the De Morgan laws. It's not just, it's, it's different, uh, oh no, it actually just is, sorry, it just is the, the previous one backwards. It's, it's exactly the, it's the proof 15 that we just did, but now this is the other direction, but I also changed the letter, so it's, um, but anyway, um, good. So, uh, these, these two are logically equivalent. Uh, in proof 15, we, we went in one direction, and now in proof uh, 14, we're going in this direction. 
Alright, um, so, uh, I'm very convinced it's true, which is a good thing to do before you start, uh, doing a proof. Uh, maybe we should just begin. Okay, so, we begin. Uh, alright. Uh, here is my premise, not P and R, and, uh, I want to conclude, uh, not P or not R. Okay, so I, I'm going to exhibit kind of, you know, good sort of strategies here or something like that. Uh, and, and that is, I'm going to, to really do what I think you should do too uh, while you're learning, which is do these proofs from the outside in. And, and this is why I kind of think it is better to do these all on paper, um, uh, on, to be honest, and not, not use uh, the, the computer software, because uh, only when you're doing it on paper can you, can you sort of do stuff like this. When you don't really know what's coming, you kind of fill the proof in from the middle. So this is my goal, and you have to have the discipline to kind of ignore uh, the, the premise for the moment and focus on the goal. What's the goal? To prove not P or not R. Okay. Oh, how am I going to do that? Well, what kind of a sentence is this down here that I'm trying to prove? Answer, it is a disjunction. How do I prove a disjunction? Well, I have a rule, disjunction introduction. And uh, how does disjunction introduction work? Well, I, I prove one of the two disjuncts and then I or the other one on. Alright, so if you were very naive about this, you might sort of hope that uh, I could uh, execute this proof by getting to, to not P and then it would just be uh, sort of trivial to just or this other thing on. Alright, but uh, you have to sort of ask yourself, is that going to work? And the answer is, that's just not going to work. Because our proof system that we've set up is sound, and it will only let you prove uh, things that are actually valid. And you have to sort of be doing these calculations in your head as you strategize through this proof. Um, and uh, is this going to be uh, successful uh, is another way of saying, is this argument uh, valid? Uh, and the answer is no. This argument is just not valid. Because if it's not the case that uh, P and R, um, then uh, it means, that, so if it's not true that they're both true, then it means that at least one of them is false. But perhaps it was R that was false. Uh, which is to say, uh, if P is uh, true and R is false, uh, then uh, that makes their conjunction true, um, but then that would make the, um, the overall, uh, did I do that backwards? Uh, sorry. Um, if, if, if P is true and R is false, what I meant to say was, that makes the, the conjunction uh, false. Yeah. Uh, so that, this was a good uh, truth assignment, uh, which makes the overall uh, proposition true. Okay, but, of course, uh, I just assumed that, that, that P was true. So uh, if P is, is true, uh, then uh, the not P is false. And so what I've just done here in a kind of I'm too lazy to make a truth table and I don't want to and you don't want to either, what I've just done is to sort of show pretty explicitly that uh, under the particular truth assignment in which P is true and R is false, um, this premise is true but this conclusion is false. So this, this argument is just not valid. Since this argument is not, and intuitively it's not valid either, because yeah, like I was saying, if it's not the case that P and R, well, then it means that at least one of them is false, but you don't know that it was P that, that was false, maybe it was R. Okay, since this argument's not valid, you're just not going to be able to prove this. Um, and so, uh, that, that strategy is just not going to work. And, by the way, by, by a symmetric argument, you know, neither is this method going to work, of proving not R, and they're just kind of trivially adding on this not P. Alright, so, we're in a kind of an uncharted territory here. I need to prove a disjunction, but uh, I can't use disjunction uh, 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 introduction, and that's because um, from, from line one, uh, you know, this follows, but neither of those disjuncts uh, themselves follow. So, how are we possibly going to, to do this? Uh, and uh, the answer is there's really just one way to prove um, something uh, when you have no other obvious method available, and that is proof by contradiction. 
that's kind of what you reach for when there's nothing else to do. So um, you have to be able to have confidence with every single thing I've just said, and uh, that leads you to the conclusion. This takes you either you know 10 seconds of thought or 10 minutes of thought, but at some point you need to convince yourself, yeah, man, there's only one possible way this is going to work, and that is this: doing this whole thing by contradiction. In other words, I will assume not um, not P uh, or not R, and from that I will somehow get a contradiction which will enable me to conclude not 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 P or not R, and uh, then I just use uh, negation elimination to get back to my final thing. Okay, so once you've committed to this approach as being the only possible approach, and it really is, um, the things are getting a little bit more clear, but there's still a lot of work to do. And uh, what makes this proof so hard is that uh, now, even though I have a, a goal, a sub-goal, that sub-goal being to, to get this bottom, uh, I have very little to work with right now. In particular, I have lines 1 and, and lines 2. But uh, neither of these are kind of actionable uh, propositions. And uh, because uh, I can't sort of, I have no sort of rules for, for decomposing these propositions. I can't immediately extract information out of them and just kind of go and, and hope for the best. And that's because, on some kind of fundamental level, uh, you know, line one and line two, they're, they're negations. And like, what is a negation, man? Like, a negation is saying that something's not true. Okay, well how do I squeeze information out of a, 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 of a negation? There are really only two ways, um, uh, and, uh, and the real one is that you use it as part of a proof by contradiction. The sort of destiny of any negation is to be combined uh, with its uh, base proposition to, to, to construct some kind of um, contradiction. And so you have to sort of feel, when you see this bottom down here, that the, where this bottom is coming from is going to be proving either P and R, or this not P or not R. Uh, and um, so, okay, uh, that's, that's going to be, that's got to be, that's the only way, right? The only way to, to get this contradiction is to get a contradiction from something, and that's all lines one and two are. They're, they are the negations from, from which I will construct uh, this, this contradiction. Okay, and then you have to be, have this uh, extra sort of level uh, of metacognition here or something, and you have to say, okay, well, which is it, man? Is it, is it this that I'm going to prove? The not P or not R? Or is it the P and R? Uh, and, um, no, it's not going to be the not P or not R. That's the very thing I'm trying to prove at the moment, right? Here I am, at the moment, attempting to prove not P or not R. Uh, and so, um, uh, if I somehow were able to prove not P or not R uh, from just line one, and then conjoin it with line two, well then I just would have done so already. Uh, it's the very fact that I wasn't able, this is kind of subtle, but it's the very fact that I wasn't able to prove not P or not R directly that caused me to start this proof by contradiction in the first place. And so I am, I am not going to be able to simply now uh, just bust out a proof of, of what I have written here in red uh, because uh, for all the same reasons that we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes, it's not possible to, to prove that in a direct manner from line one. And line two is not going to help you at all. Okay, all of this talking should convince you that in fact the goal should be to prove P and R. Uh, and if I can prove uh, P uh, and R, then I'm in the home stretch because then I can take that P and R, I can and it together with um, not uh, P and R, uh, and uh, that is a contradiction, and uh, then this proof will hold. This whole proof will be done. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Uh, good. Uh, and, and that this is going to be sort of the only way to do this. All right, how am I going to prove PNR? Well, finally, uh, I almost have some, some clear direction as to what to do next. Because there is a good way to prove P and R. You first prove P, and then you prove R. Okay, so now I have one thought on my mind. Proving P. How am I going to prove P? Oh, man. Once again, I have uh, nothing to work with. 
neither one nor two are immediately uh, uh, helping me. So, okay, if my goal is to prove P, how, how am I going to do it? Well, you do the thing that you, when, when you do the thing that you do when there's nothing else that you can think to do, which is you do it by contradiction. So finally, I start a third uh, subproof. Uh, and this is my third, uh, 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 this is now a sort of a proof by contradiction inside of a proof by contradiction. Uh, I suppose not P. And I hope uh, for a contradiction. And now, hopefully, the proof at this point, you're done. But all getting to this point, I think, was quite hard. Uh, and why are you done? Well, because if you, get, if you assume this not P, then of course I can or on not R by, um, uh, by, by, by or uh, intro, uh, line three. Um, but that is contradictory, this line four, with line two. So I have not P or not R, and not, not P or not R. Reason, uh, and intro lines four and two. Uh, that is a contradiction. It's in the form X and not X, and so that's bottom intro five. Uh, and now I just repeat this, oh, and, okay, and, and, and so what was the whole point of that? I assumed something, it led to a bottom, therefore I conclude the negation of that thing. So I get not, not P, reason, negation intro, uh, three through six. In other words, I did a proof by contradiction. I assumed something, it led to absurdity, therefore the opposite of that thing. And finally, uh, P, by negation elim. Uh, on this line seven. And now I do it all again. Uh, so I have uh, here, got to write a little small maybe, uh, I assume not R. Uh, from that I get not P or not R. From that I get not P or not R. And uh, not not P or not R. Where is all this coming from? Uh, this line 10 comes from an or intro uh, uh, of line 9, and this comes from and intro uh, lines 10 and 2. And so, as I kind of promised, right, uh, the sort of destiny of any negation is to be used in a proof by contradiction. Where is line 2 getting used? It's getting used in line 5 and in line 11. It's getting used in lines, uh, and, and that's maybe one of the benefits of, of this notation device is that you can just sort of see precisely when Proposition 2 gets used based on the notations. It gets used, uh, it gets used within these two little proofs to, to, to get this particular contradiction. And, uh, okay, uh, just to finish this off, in line 13, uh, I get not, not, R. Uh, that's negation intro uh, 9 through 12. And finally, in line 14, I get R negation elim 13. So that gives me uh, 15 uh, by and intro uh, uh, 8 and 14. And now finally, I combine this line 15 with line 1. And that is, like I said, also, it's the destiny of line one to be used in a proof by contradiction, and now I use it. So, and intro, uh, one, and, well, I guess I do 15, one, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that is of the form x and not x, so I conclude bottom by bottom intro 16. Well, I did it. I assumed something in line two. Uh, the opposite of the thing, the negation of the thing I was really trying to prove, and I showed that that led to absurdity. Therefore, conclusion, the negation of that thing. And that is negation intro uh, lines 2 through 17. And finally, finally, I, I win uh, by uh, deleting these two negations, and that's negation elimination line 18. Okay. Whew.
that was quite hard. Uh, and I'll just say uh, for my own students, or really for anyone who's watching this, who's learning this, um, you know, great. Uh, if you did not get this on your own by yourself, uh, that's fine. Uh, you might think that you get this now by watching me do it, but probably not. So you should, you know, wait 24 hours and just try it again by yourself on a, a scrap piece of scrap paper and see if you can just do it all over again. And if you do this like three or four times, this becomes kind of like a part of you. Uh, and uh, what have you really accomplished? We've sort of, we've sort of demonstrated in some ways the logic of these De Morgan laws by reducing them down to these sort of base operations on each of the connectives. So I think there's value in this. Uh, and um, there's one more thing I was going to say. Can't remember. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, good. 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 Uh, two more. Um, let's do these two more right now. They're not. They're sort of not as hard. Um, I did. I did have some other small piece of advice I was going to say. Yeah. So I don't know. This. Yeah. This is uh, difficult. Um, but uh, oh oh, one thing I was going to say that's not that important is there's an alternate proof of this that's actually a tiny bit more efficient. It might be one line shorter or two lines shorter. Uh, it's kind of very uh, different actually. So if you're looking for like a challenge, uh, try uh, to do a different proof of this that is in fact kind of more efficient. Um, so I won't I won't do that right now in this video. <gasps> okay, uh, 16 and 17, and then we and then we will stop. Uh, 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 uh. And I think uh, one of these is is kind of easy. Uh, maybe uh, proof sixteen uh, is a famous valid argument known as disjunct the ar disjunctive syllogism, uh, and this, that's just the name of the logical argument. And uh, it, it looks like this: if you know p or q, but p is false, then it must be q. Very reasonable. Uh, and uh, certainly true, and you can verify with the truth table, but there's no need to clutter our minds with memorization of all of these uh, valid arguments, because this is just, in our system, is just another valid argument, and, and we can just prove it uh, using our rules. Let's just do that right now. I have a P or Q, and not P. How am I going to do this? Well, I need Q. Uh, let's do A. Proof by cases on line one. Uh, and so I get uh, P is a possibility, uh, or is it? Um, well, uh, actually, this is a little, this is maybe a little bit uh, uh, difficult, I, I suppose, because um, what you sort of want to do, okay, we want to prove Q, right? So reasoning with that a little bit more, if I want to prove Q, uh, I have this disjunction. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a proof by cases at some point, because that's the only way to squeeze information out of a disjunction, is via proof by cases. So uh, let's just talk it out. Uh, well, one option is Q. Well, if it's, if, if, if it's the Q disjunct that's true, then I'm just done immediately. Um, but if it's the P disjunct that's true, how does that lead to Q? Oh, well, I also know not P, and it's just not possible for P and not P to be true. So this proof is actually an echo of uh, uh, one of those first proofs we did in this video, uh, which, which says uh, that uh, from two contradictory premises you can prove anything. And so here, I have to now be kind of bold and say, all right, well, if it's the P that's true, then from two and three, I now sort of hold in my hand uh, the power to destroy the world or create the world. Uh, either way you look at it, I can prove anything. Uh, in particular, I can prove Q if I want. Uh, and how do I do that? I uh, assume not Q, and I do a proof by contradiction. Well, uh, if you suppose temporarily that not Q uh, holds, well then just no, because I have P and not P, um, and that's uh, and intro uh, 3, 2. Uh, that is contradictory. Uh, so bottom intro five, uh, and therefore it's just false. This this not Q business was just false, uh, and um, so in seven I get not not Q uh, negation intro 
line um, uh, lines four through six, uh, and then finally uh, Q by negation elim. All right, uh, negation elim seven. Okay, uh, where are we now? I sort of pr I showed that sort of P leads to Q uh, by showing that well, since I already knew not P. Uh, having that together with P is impossible, uh, and from that I can prove anything. In particular, I proved Q. Okay, and then uh, what am I doing again? I'm in the middle of a proof by cases, so now it's time to consider the other case. The other case was Q. Well, but Q is also the conclusion I seek, so I'm just immediately done. And here we once again employ uh, reiteration uh, to just force it to be in, in this format that we want. Uh, I think everything's looking good kind of zoning out a little bit right now, but uh, here we go. Finally, I assert Q. Reason or elimination. I took this disjunction in line one. I explored the left disjunct P in lines in the three through eight subproof, and in the nine through 10 subproof, I explored the right disjunct, and in both cases, I got Q, therefore Q. Okay, last proof. Uh, the last uh, proof is uh, proof 17, and, uh, okay, um, uh, let's go. Uh, what is proof 17? It is the so-called law of the excluded middle. Uh, it says uh, that uh, either P or not P. Uh, it says that that's kind of a tautology. Okay, um, certainly uh, in classical propositional logic, a sentence is either true or false. And so sort of one of those must be true. You might almost think of this as some kind of axiom, but it's really not an axiom. Uh, it's certainly something that you could verify is a tautology um, from making a truth table, but uh, that's part of the power of, of the Fitch style proof system is that it can prove any tautology. Uh, and so we are going to prove this uh, from no premises, thus demonstrating uh, that uh, P or not P is a tautology. Okay, and so once again, we work from the outside in. Why uh, is it true that sort of P or not P? Well, um, I have nothing to work with, so I have nothing I can do sort of up here in the top. I have to reason uh, backwards uh, from, the, from, the, uh, uh, from the outside in. So focusing my attention on the thing I'm trying to prove, here it's sort of obvious that it's not going to be possible to prove just one of these. Uh, and so I'm in that same position where I'm thinking, okay, what can I possibly do? There's only one thing to do. And that is do this by contradiction. So I am going to uh, way up here uh, suppose not uh, p or not p, and from that uh, somehow I will get a contradiction, and uh, that contradiction will enable me to assert uh, back out in the main section uh, not not uh, p or not p, and then then I'll, I'll be done. Okay, so how does this line one uh, lead to a contradiction? Well, it's still sort of, sort of not obvious uh, maybe what to do, and I have only one line uh, that I can work with, and I can't really do anything with it because it's a negation. And you might be thinking, ah, if only there was some way to work with a negation. There is. The destiny of every negation is to be used in a proof by contradiction. Um, okay, so how am I going to do this? Uh, all right, I, I'm just going to do this for you. Almost anything you do now is just going to work. Uh, for example, just suppose P. Uh, I think that's what I want to do. Yeah, so uh, if I just suppose P, oh, there it is. I'm done. Because uh, from P, I can or on, not P. So that's uh, or intro uh, two. And, well, that's a contradiction. So bottom intro uh, three. Okay, but now, uh, sort of, uh, uh, okay, um, <laughs> this contradiction, so uh, back in the main, uh, what, what have I done? I assumed P, I showed that it led to, to absurdity, therefore I conclude not P, reason, negation, uh, intro uh, two through four. But now, not P is also contradictory to line one, because, I can or on P to the front of that um, by or intro uh, line five. I'm not really explaining myself here so much, but I kind of want to be done. 
Uh, and, uh, well, finally, this line 6 is what I wanted after all. I probably should have mentioned that, 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 that this line 6 was really my goal, ultimately, because uh, this contradiction was only going to come from negating line 1. And so I sort of needed to, I sort of needed to prove P or not P, um, but uh, whereas that was impossible directly earlier, together with line 1, uh, it's, it's, it's the use of line 1... Um, I kind of just skipped an entire line, didn't I? Uh, I kind of just, I kind of just skipped an entire. Oh man, really uh, zoning out. Um, what I meant, what, what I now I'm looking back on this. I wrote a bunch of garbage. P or not P is not a contradiction. P or not P is only a contradiction when combined with line one. It's it's holding this poison pill of line one in my hand. Uh, which makes uh, which makes three uh, uh, change from something innocent to something which can which can be combined to be to be a contradiction. Sorry. Uh, so this is uh, uh, and intro uh, three and one, and it's that which is a contradiction. Uh, bottom intro um, three and one. What? What am I doing? Bottom intro four. Okay. Just get a hold of myself here. Uh, this I assume P, I or on an P, I and that line three together with line one. That's of the form X and not X. That gives me a bottom. Uh, now I conclude uh, not P from that reason uh, negation intro uh, two through five. Now I'm trying to stay focused here. Uh, I or on. Uh, P to the front of that line 6, or intro 6, and once again I reach for this poisoned lined 1. I call it poison because I, it's just false, right? Uh, and so I am showing that it's false right now, uh, and this is an intro uh, 7 and 1, and it's that which is of the form x and not x, so uh, that's bottom intro 8. Okay, what have I achieved? In line 1, I assume something, that thing led to a bottom, I now conclude in line 10 that this is, um, I include the negation of that. So, negation intro uh, 1 through 9, and finally, in line 11, I have negation even. It's kind of harder than I remembered. I haven't done this proof in a while. Uh, I guess what's going on here is like a, it's like a proof by contradiction inside of a proof by contradiction. Yeah, okay. Whew. All right, if you can do all of those, you are in really good shape. I probably should have made the homework, you know, just, just those uh, for, for Tuesday. Anyway, there it is. Uh, anyone who watched this entire thing, you deserve some kind of award, but you are also now very smart. Goodbye. <laughs>